what happened with Warner contract? Did it really break your spirit until you didn't want to do music anymore? Boy, Warner, Warner introduced me to a different level of music. Um, I, that's how I discovered that there is more politics in music than in politics itself. I was signed to Warner, I did an album, and it was only released in Scandinavia. I thought I was making music for the world. They took a, an artist from the Americas and made me a Swedish artist. And that just never worked for me. Like, I don't even have a fan base here. I am from another place where people know me and know me stuff and, you know, they're more open than them. them. So uh, I discovered that because Warner belongs to a group of companies. And because they only do business within them, them, them own group of company. Um, to release the record outside of Scandinavia meant going to Warner Company. So I I'd, I'd just I'd work my way down the hierarchy. So it was WEA, Warner, Electra, Atlantic. And if one of those didn't pick it up, then I would go to one of the labels that I signed, the Chrysalis, the, all of these. And, and if one of those didn't pick up, then I go to the next year. And I'd, by the time I done work my way down to the bottom, it would have been three years. And then <laughs> that just didn't work for me. And I was asking about releasing outside of the Warner Group of companies. And they were like, well, that's not how we do it. And I was like, she, well, we had. We had one option, with one album with one option to renew. And I was told that we we're going to start working on the next album. And I'm, I'm like, this is a waste of time for me. If, we go, if I go leave all the way from Jamaica and come here and make an album for your release in a Scandinavia, and then go make a next album, and we still never go back to my market. It's like you're killing everything that I've been prior to you meeting me, and what's the point? Why would you want to take me? It's like you see one wildflower in the, the woods, and you take it up and put it in a pot and bring it near a house, go kill it. Um, send me back home, and we argued over that until I won the fight. Because me said, boy, I go in the office, go war, I don't lie you. One day, I just get mad, mm -hmm. and jump in my vehicle and say, yeah, you hear me? I call, and I say, who did it? Hope everybody did it, because I come up there, I have a baseball bat, and I go walk through the place. And by the time I hang up off of the phone, five minutes later, my lawyer called me and said, you're not free, you're free, you can't go home. That's it. I leave. And nobody believed me when I said I, I wanted the contract to end. Because, you know, people have this idea that signing to a label is, <laughs> is the end all, be all of a music career, but independents are actually in a better pos position because you don't have to deal with any of that politics. Um, you, don't, you really don't have any franchise in your career when you sign to a label, especially dependent on these, these newer contracts are even worse because they're 360 deals where them DP not even your performance. At least I could have gone on tour and released some of the stress. Now, the, many of these artists don't have that luxury, you know? If you go off and go tour and say, all right, me, me, me upset in my recording life, but me, me come feel good over here, so they, they don't have that. So I, I ended up ended it and came back to where music is actually free. Big up yourself, Jamaica. We fight a lot, you know, but music free, yeah, so, yeah. Why did you move to Sweden? And what was that experience like professionally and personally? I started visiting Sweden, I think, about 1998 or 99, around the end of 98, um, because I, I was um, courted by the head of international ANR, uh, head of international ANR from Warner Music in Sweden, and I went there first to check out the place and to see if it made sense, and and then I went back to sign to Warner. I, I became one of their artists, and moving there was easy because I feel like I did exhaust Jamaica. Um, I didn't exhaust the audience, but I exhausted the the, the production level. I wanted to do more stuff. I wanted to say more things. I had so much more to say, you know, and I found that I was limited to some very, very um, basic topics. The interpersonal relationship, yes, I always thought about that, but that is not the extent that I like scratch the surface to what I want to talk about. I want to talk about life, you know, it's like, I want to talk about the entire tree and you want me stuck on a leaf and <laughs> it just don't work for me. So I had to get away. I felt like I was chasing my tail. Everyone would go for a card, somebody said, I want a tune like you're not ready for this. I want a tune like Angle Red. I want a tune like Gaga. And it felt like, but I make that song there already. Why would you want one like that? 
It's like you want a duplicate. Why you don't want a duplicate when we can make one new one? And then people told me, oh, I this you do because of these people know you for, and I this them love you for, but they never had a chance to know me for anything else. Them don't know if them not going to love the rest of things more, which time proved they did. So I left. And the people that I got to did a different version of that. <laughs> and then I left this and took them. I mean, I stuck now. I miss the left. <laughs> when I reached back to Jamaica, after, after ending the Warner Agreement, I came back to Jamaica with my personal trainer from a gym, a Stockholm exporter. And I was looking for a spot to set up a gym here. Because me said me done with music. <laughs> me just set up one gym and them the time I have my gym body. And my six pack wasn't in the fridge. Yeah man. So when I come back and set up, I come back and I look for a place for set up gym and thing. I mean I wanna tell you two things came out of that. One my, my personal trainer, a female from the gym where we used to go, we, did, we became kind of close because she come to my yard and she throw out bad food and put in good food and all kinds of things. And them times I didn't take body thing more serious. No, I don't care, a vessel. And I put anything more into it now, Ben and Jerry's and all of them. But back then, I actually took it seriously and I was looking for a place. So I go to the studio one day and I carry my personal trainer with me, go hang out. And the attention from the men, the negative attention from the men, made her decide she didn't want to stay here. And she was like, mm -mm, I'm not feeling safe because Manala come to me and ask me fear if I can give them her. Um, she never feel, and, and this is something that we Jamaican women have grown a very thick skin for cope with, but she's Swedish. She come from far, I know it was Stockholm girl. She moved, come to come work, she, she fragile, she never used to that. And her face turned beet red when she said, Tanya, I don't feel safe for me. If I just take her and leave, and then she's like, no, I want to go back home. And that kind of threw out the, the old gym vibe because I didn't really feel comfortable doing it with anybody else. And then also, my virgin G. Bell Navis, family of Main Street, and um, when in other, in the Dava distribution company too, I don't remember what name. But G called me and he said, yo, Tanya, Link you have a little rhythm when I try with you, you know. Um, go put it for me, for me now. I said, G, I don't do no more music, you know, I don't want to do no music because I don't think the music thing is for me. And he's like, he's like, all right, you know, if you do no more music, but just help out Link you with that one rhythm me and I help him put, do the beat and thing. At that point, all of the big songs weren't on it yet. And me go, when I go on, Danny English and Eggnog have a tune on it. Um, it was, I think Zoom J did it on it. Few people. But I go voice for the rhythm, I say it in Diwali. And when I voice that the song, you can't touch me no more. And that song just start walk. <laughs> like it just walked off on its own. And then everybody start link me now and I say, boy, I never know your day back, you know. And we just start voice tune after tune after tune. And automatically, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a muscle. When you develop, the moment you start work, it, it go right back to being toned. And it's like, you know, I guess I still have the music. It never turned out so bad, because after that came Youngster Blues and Revolution and all of that. And I was prepared to quit before that. But yeah, that I did my little, my little sojourn. Big up Sweden still, you know, because out of that, let me tell you something, people. Don't ever look at any bad experience as exclusively that, because out of your bad experiences, if you look into them, are some great opportunities for you to grow and learn and develop new relationships, friendships, whatever you call them, because me have Swedish family based from based on just me moving there. Um, I have a nice little couple where I kind of adapt with and take, turn, them, turn me in a feed them one. And also my workmates became kind of like extended family and out of that came for these streets this is Love, which I did with Wycliffe, produced by same um, Spilt Milk, same person who did my Swedish album, did those beats. So good things came out of it. And my work ethic also benefited greatly because me learn more things. And I also learned to be, become my own engineer because this is something that Warner gave me. Warner sent me to guitar lessons, so I play guitar and write. A lot of development came out of it, you know? So it wasn't entirely a bad thing. I don't want to just sit on and look like me and knock it. 
which me happy say me actually work my way around to saying this because me not like it just sound like a bad experience. No, it wasn't just a bad experience. Me learn enough and me have enough from it. I me record majority of the songs are for gangster blues. I me had and well, most of gangster blues, almost all are revolution. I think if if not all are revolution vocals, I record myself. So and and that only came because one did actually give me a studio. They gave me equipment so that I could have worked from home. And so that was a good thing, right? So big up on yourself, so well, we never work out in our one. But you know, like you have your little ex, it never really work out for the relationship, but I'm teacher for driver, you just say thanks. Yeah, man, that you come for universe says she need for can drive, you know. And she never, never really did it for Marty, you know. Yes, teacher for driver, you just when we don't learn for driver, I say, all right, Bridget, <laughs> what good. Well, let me hear you say, my auntie, my auntie.